It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about homepage. Now if you know me, you know that I've been using Dashi for quite a long time. I've talked about Homer and I've talked about Heimdall. I wanted to cover another really nice start page, a link page, whatever you want to call this. Now people always ask, why do you have that? Why couldn't you just use links? So if you look, I do. I use links like crazy. Okay, I do use links in the browser like crazy, but a nice start page is about my services. So I get more information out of this than just a link to my pages in a lot of cases. You can see the little green dot that tells me my service is actually able to be reached, which means it's up and running right now at the very least. It doesn't mean it's functioning correctly, but it gives me a little bit of information. I also get the time and the current temperature, which is probably not accurate. There we go, 101 degrees today, a little bit warmish. So you see kind of what we get out of something like this. So I really like Dashi. I've enjoyed Dashi for a long time. I support it on GitHub financially just to help keep it going. But there are some other really great options out there and some people just may want to try something different. They may want to try something else. So homepage is one that some of my viewers have brought up multiple times to me at this point. And I thought, you know what, it's time for me to cover this and see what you guys think. So if you get a look, this is kind of a screenshot of what it's going to look like. And once you've got it set up, of course, it could look quite different as well. They've got some other screenshots here on their page that you can look at to see what all they've got going on. And then, of course, they've got a list of their features, which is pretty extensive. They've got support and suggestions at places where you can go to make those support requests and make suggestions. They've got your getting started, which is what we're going to use with our Docker Compose. Now, if you want to just do Docker Run, you have that option here as well. And if you want to use Node straight up, you can just use that. You do not have to use Docker. I know a lot of you guys always say, I don't want to use Docker. I just want to put it on my system. Here's your option. Here's the, here's the option to run it with just Node. You can just go do a git pull and run it with Node if you want to do it that way as well. Um, they have a little bit of configuration information. If you want to help develop it and you're a developer and you know how to do some of this stuff, or if you're just trying to get into development and you want to you know, throw your hands in there and say, let me see what I can do, then here's your options for that as well. So really cool. Um, and if you look up here, I always like to look, kind of let you guys see this, but you can see six hours ago. I mean, this is some pretty recent stuff that they've been doing. Uh, very useful to see that. Let's go look at the license here real quick. Um, we're going to just kind of check that out as well. So if you look here, it's the GNU General Public License version 3. So this is a fully open source project, which is great. This is what we want. We always want open source software. That's the best thing you can get. It means anybody can grab it. They can make it better. They can share that back with everybody else. You can take it. You can make it better and share it back with other people. You can share it with your family and friends without having to worry about somebody coming to your door saying, hey, you shared my stuff. That wasn't right. Why did you do that? This is what they want when they give you this type of the license. The thing I'm trying to remember to point out on these projects that I bring to you guys is how you can support them in, in a financial way. Because again, if out of 100,000 subscribers that I've got on this channel now, if each of you just went and donated 50 cents to this guy, he would have $50,000 to encourage him to keep going with this project for the next year. So just keep that in mind. If you can afford a dollar, go, go give him a dollar. If you can afford a pound, if you can afford whatever your currency happens to be, a little bit of that really goes a long way and makes a difference to let them know that we appreciate what they're doing. So it gives you a few different ways over here on the right side panel and the link to this page will be in the show notes in the description as always. But you can go here and support them in a few different ways. So just pick the one that seems to fit the best with you and definitely go do that if you like this project and you would like to keep seeing this project moving forward. I think it's so valuable that we have the ability to give something as small as a dollar and still make a difference or maybe as big as a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. Whatever you've got if you find value in something, make sure to let the people who make that product know that you find value in it by supporting them and making sure that they understand that what, what they do is important to you. All right, we're going to get into the installation of Homepage right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. As always, we want to use Docker. 
or Docker Compose if possible to run our applications. And the reason that I say that, I know a lot of you are not super wild about Docker, but I love Docker because it lets me containerize that at thing. It lets me run it on the same system as I run a bunch of my other services and it keeps it completely separate from those services if I don't want them to communicate, which means if I mess it up, I can just go destroy that container and none of my other services are affected. They don't ever know it was there and they don't even care. They just keep running. It's really great. It's not throwing a bunch of different things into my file system where I have to go clean them out and figure out where they went. I really get to control it down to the very last bit of where everything goes and it lets me keep everything to together and lets me back things up very cleanly. And if something catastrophic happens, which has happened to me, it lets me bring things back up very fast, which is awesome. So I really appreciate the way that Docker works and what it provides to me. If you're one of those people that says, I don't like it because it's a black box, that's not true. You can actually see what's going inside of going on inside of your Docker containers by just jumping into the container in your terminal and looking at all the same things you always look at. It's kind of like having your own little contained mini machine running inside of your host system. That said, we're going to scroll down here to where they had the Docker Compose. And this is a type of service that you generally just want to run on your inside network. It's not something you want on every computer you ever log on to. But if you do, you can absolutely set this up with a reverse proxy. You'd want to put some kind of authentication in front of it, I'm sure, so that other people aren't trying to attach to your different uh, network items and things like that. But this isn't going to let you see everything inside of your network that's running from some outside machine unless you've got some kind of wire guard or some other tunnel set up that you're accessing everything from. So be aware of that. This is really something meant to run inside of your network that you, you jump on and you see it just like this one here, where if I want to go and check out my remotely install, I just click on it and it opens up my remotely install. Now this does run from a URL, but if I didn't, if it was something that only ran local, like my portainer, for instance, um, then this is what I would get. And if I try to do this from anywhere outside of my network and not on a VPN, I wouldn't see this page. It would just tell me it couldn't find it. So just kind of understand that as we move forward with this. So I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to copy it. And I've already got my terminal open and I have SSH over to the server that I want to install this on. So I'll just show you that right now I have this Docker folder that everything is installed in. I know there's a lot here, but this Docker folder is where all of my Docker applications are installed right now. What I'm going to do is create a folder for home page. So I'm going to do mkdir-p and then I'm going to type docker slash home page. And what this says is make a directory. And if this folder doesn't exist, create it for me. If it does exist, just use the one that's there. Next, it jumps to this one. It says, and if this folder doesn't exist, create it for me. If it does exist, then use the one that's there. In this case, we know it doesn't exist. That's why we're creating it. When I hit enter, everything gets done automatically. And again, if I do an LS, you'll see I still just have that one Docker folder. But now if I CD into that Docker folder and do an LS, I'll have a home page folder right here. So we can CD into that guy. And if we clear that out and do an LS, you see there's nothing in here yet. So we're going to say nano docker hyphen compose dot yml. This is a file we want to create and it's empty. We're going to do control shift, uh, or actually I'll do right click and paste in this case. There we go. So we paste in that docker compose information and we'll go up through here and kind of look at what all we've got. So it's a version 3.3, that's fine. The service that we're going to have is going to be called home page. And the image is right here. It's going to pull from the GitHub uh, container repo and it's Ben Phelps and home page. So the name for the container is also going to be home page. And then the ports that it wants is 3000 and 3000. Now 3000 is a pretty common port for node applications. So I'm going to change this to something else. It doesn't really matter what you change it to as long as it's a port that's not in use on your host system. Always only change the left side. The left side of this mapping is my host port. The right side is the port inside of the container and it expects this application to be running at 3000. So unless you're a developer and you have somehow changed this one on purpose, you should never change the right side of this mapping. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put in, let's put in 8921. It doesn't matter. It's just a, it's just a port. It's just a number that we can use that as long as it's not in use by anything else, it's fine. So now it says path to config and then it says slash app slash config. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this part and I'm going to put dot slash. So it's going to have this dot, it's going to have this config file and the dot slash says put it in the current folder that I'm in, which is the same folder where we're creating the Docker Compose. Again, I'm keeping everything together inside of this homepage folder. 
Now this next one says, okay, I also want to have access to things running on the Docker sock. So this one we're going to leave exactly as it is. There's nothing for us to change. Anything after the hashtag is just a comment for you. So we're not going to do anything there. And then finally the user information here. If we wanted to do this, we could. I'm not going to undo this right now. We'll see if we need to do it in a minute. I'm just going to save what I've got with control O, press enter to confirm, and then I'm going to exit the nano editor with control X. And we're just going to do docker space compose up dash D. Now, if you try to do it this way and you get an error, you may need to do it like this, just depending on what version of docker compose you have. You may have to put a hyphen, so docker hyphen compose up dash D. If you have a newer version of docker compose, it should work with a space. This is going to go out and start pulling down everything it needs. So it's going to pull down that image that we need for home page. Shouldn't take very long. This is the biggest file here with about eight megabytes. Look like there's a couple of bigger files, but that's it. And everything's running. Now, if we want to see what's going on while it's trying to start up, we can do Docker space compose. And again, if you have an older version, you might have to do Docker hyphen compose, but then we can do logs space hyphen F. So it tells us right there it's listing on port 3000, but remember we changed that to 8921 in our case. So we're going to go to that one. So there's not a lot of logging going on. Nothing seems to be messed up. Um, we'll control C to get out of the logging. And if we do LS, you'll see we've got this config folder. So let's do CD config and then do an LS. There's no config file in there yet, so we'll probably have to create one. But that's it. We've got everything installed everything is running now we're going to, have to do some configuration to make our site come up if we go to our browser and we open a new tab and we go to the ip address of that server now in your case if you're on the machine where you're installing it you do localhost if you're not then use the ip address of the machine that you're installing it on and the port is 8921 so this is going to load up. It's got some base information, some base stuff there, but really we don't have a config set up yet. So it's got, it shows us groups, second group, third group, a few basic things here that it's trying to read. So we've got a little bit of information to start. It's got a search bar up here, which is pretty nice. And a little bit of uh, just kind of basic information in the bottom right. So everything's running. The next thing we need to do is figure out how to configure this thing. Now that we've got home page running, uh, the next part is configuration and configuration is done through configuration files. So to get those configuration files created, if you'll remember, to get those configuration files created, if you'll remember, I looked at it while ago in the terminal and there was nothing in the config folder. But once you actually visit your home page for the first time, it generates those configuration files. So now we can see several configuration files here. There's also some logs if you're having issues so you can kind of figure out what's happening. And there's a lot going on here that you kind of need to understand. So there's this bookmarks.yaml. That's going to be this section down here. So that's where you set up these different bookmarks here at the bottom. Then you've got the services.yaml. That's this one here. And that is this section on the screen here above the bookmarks. Okay. And then you've got a few other things that you can set up as well. Um, so you've got some different settings that you can set, but I, you know, nothing special to set there. Um, widgets so this is some of those widgets up at the top if you look up here you've got your little widgets right here so you've got a few different things that you can set up now there are some settings now i'm going to warn you this is going to go bright for a second i'm just going to show you the daytime mode uh, so i'm just going to flip this switch so you get kind of a day mode if you prefer the non-dark and then switch it back if you want the dark and then over here you've got some color settings and things like that where you can pick some different colors um, you can switch it to a different blue or, you know, kind of any, any color you want that's a really bright white, but it's got white background. So I kind of like this one. It's, it's pretty, pretty deep and dark, which is great. That, that's a little easier on my eyes. But if you like the daytime modes, you do have that option as well. So we're going to go in there and actually set some of this up and kind of play with these configuration files. So these are YAML configuration files, which means they are space dependent. You don't want to use tabs. You always want to use spaces and things need to be indented correctly. So if you run into issues, uh, websites that will check your YAML code to make sure that everything looks right and can give you a better feedback sometimes than what you get from this will, will really help. And then, you know, a little bit of Googling if you have to. But as you get used to it, it gets pretty easy to set up YAML. Um, that's how your Docker Compose file is laid out as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. But there is no graphical user interface based setup unfortunately which is something i really really like about dashi is that i can just go into the dashi and edit the actual 
file, the, the way that it looks, the page and everything in the user interface. I don't have to go use the configuration files. I can if I want to, but it does have a graphical editor, which makes it easier for me to lay things out and figure out where I want stuff and, and know how it's going to look when I'm done. Um, the nice thing about this one is that it does update kind of automatically on its own as you make changes. So we'll go in and we'll do sudo, and you have to do sudo because if you look, ls-al, um, these things are all owned by root, so we can't edit them just by default. So just remember, these are running inside the container. We just have them uh, linked or, or mapped so that they don't go away if we reset and, and upgrade a home page or anything. But just remember that they're owned by root, so we do have to use sudo to uh, adjust those things. So we're we'll going to do sudo nano, and we'll do the services first. Let's do that one first. And if we look in here, you can see they've got this group setting. So this first group, second group, and then they've got the service name. And then they've got a, a, a link, basically, and then they've got a description if you want to give it that. So if we look at the page and just see what it looks like, here's your here's my first group, which is kind of the title, my second group, my third group. And then here's the service name, and then here's that description. And if you click, it would try to go to localhost, which I don't have anything running on localhost, so that doesn't help me. But I can change those things to work the way that I want. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to rename this. Uh, let's rename this something useful. So let's call this servers uh, let's call this home servers home servers how about that and instead of my first service I'm gonna call this uh, aria which is my main proxmox server and I'll go in here and just edit this thing and we want to make that HPS so that's good so that's 192 believe that's the right address there and then we're going to call this something different. So prox mox server. And we'll go down and we'll actually just take that and one, two, three, four hyphen. And then we'll give it a space and we're going to give it BIA, which is my other prox mox server. We want to put a colon there. We're going to go out six spaces or eight spaces. Let's see, eight, I think. Um, and we're going to do href colon HTTPS colon slash slash. 209 and this is the same port number and a slash and the description again you don't have to give it a description you can if you want to but um, testing proxmox server something like that and then we could give it more um, we'll go down here and change the second group up real quick here as well let's call this um, social or actually let's call this home management and we'll give this one home assistant and we'll give it the address for that which I think is one I it's either that one or we should be able to just also do home assistant local If I spell things correctly, it will help. And then colon 8123, that should also work. And we'll call this home automation. And let's give this one another one as well. We won't even give that one a description. We'll just leave it like it is. Let's just see how we do with that. And then we've got the third group that's default. And actually, we're going to add a fourth group just so you can see that it changes. And we won't even give it a description. So we'll make sure we have one last line. Control O to save. And we're going to press enter. Now it should update. Yes. Oh, I have a mistake somewhere. Ah, yes. Okay. We'll go fix it. That's probably good. So it shows you when you have a YAML mistake. And this is telling me that I have one. And you have to have a colon after the service name. So make sure you put a colon on those. I'll save it again and we'll go back to the browser and it'll refresh. There we go. So we've got three groups with different items here. And there's my fourth group right there. And we can actually click and this should try to find my home assistant. Uh, maybe my DNS is not working. I can always go back and put the IP address. Let's see about my Proxmox server. There we go. Yeah, Proxmox is working and the other one everything's working great so this is how you can create these things you could probably do another column these are pretty wide 
given what I'm putting in them, there's nothing real. We're doing ls, uh, we're still in the config file. So if we just go back one level here into our homepage folder, what I did was I moved all of the PNG uh, icons that I have from the dashboard icons GitHub repo into the same folder where Docker uh, Compose is and where the config file is. So we're just going to go to uh, cd config again, and we're going to do sudo nano services.yaml. And we'll go here and we'll add icon and colon and we're going to put dot dot slash which means go back one level from where I'm at which is basically here we're in the config folder so here we're in the home page folder and then use the PNG folder and I want the proxmox.png file and I'll put the same thing on this one icon and dot dot slash png slash proxmox.png and we'll save and then if we go back and look at our home page there we go we've got our proxmox icon showing up on on these guys so we can do the same thing with home assistant same thing with ispy and so on and so forth all the way across the board so really um quite a quite a simple way to go and get some things done um really setting up everything that we want for our different uh, services here so yeah this is pretty pretty easy to set up let's go look at the bookmarks because this is this is a place where i feel like this could be really much more useful to me um, this is a lot thinner a lot smaller so it lets me put a lot more things if i tried to put everything that i have here and if i zoom this back out to normal size you can see what all i've got so i mean i've got 12 here i've got 10 there i've got nine here six six and three and then i've got a few here that are hidden so i've got a lot of stuff uh, kind of kind of listed out here and it's because it's pretty small that it all fits pretty well on the screen um, so kind of trying to figure out how and, and if the home page can actually deal with those types of sizes and pages uh, will be useful at some point so I definitely want to kind of figure that out all right we've got everything set up there let's just get out of that let's go look at our bookmarks pseudo nano bookmarks yaml and again you can see a similar setup to what they had before so he has github I can say GitLab and I can go here and just change the abbreviation to whatever I want and I can go to gitlab.com and I could probably put my user uh, save this and hit enter and then go look at the page and we should see it get updated and it does it says GitLab now instead so if we click on it it takes it to my profile on GitLab, which is what you'd expect. So pretty simple bookmarking, really, really not hard to do there, which is great. Um, and really, I could use this for all of my other services as well. Because these are a lot smaller, it might be even a better way to do that. If you're wanting information or detail about some of your services or something is really something you use all the time like these, you know, maybe I would want to put these up here, but uh, I think I'd use this smaller section more often, if, if anything. So really some, some very cool stuff. He's got a lot of great documentation over here. So if you're wondering about setting up the service widgets, he's got documentation on what that should look like. If you're looking to, to, to get the information widgets, he's got information about how to set these up and what, what you can put in to get them. And here's all of the available widgets that he's got right now, which is great. So again, really good documentation. So the bookmark section, uh, if you're looking for Docker information, so using Docker TLS, uh, you've got a lot of really great information about what you can do with this system. It's pretty nice. It's very lightweight and it loads up very fast. So that's one of the things that they claimed was that it would load up almost instantaneously, which is true. Um, very, very, very fast for it to load. So I've been pretty impressed and it reloads very fast and refreshes. One of the problems I have here is when I want to get a icon to show up, um, it does not refresh all the time. I have to tell Firefox like, hey, don't cache all this stuff and you have to do some special things in dev mode so i'm not sure why all the caching happens but it probably to make it load faster but it also makes it hard to make modifications to see those things happen really fast so i really kind of like that this thing refreshes pretty quickly and shows me those changes very fast uh, the color schemes are okay i'd love to see one that's a little bit darker more like this uh, that'd be really nice but i think you can kind of go in and probably mess with the color themes as well if you want to and kind of create your own but yeah this is not a bad project very cool very nice home page, very fast, very easy to set up as you saw, very easy to get going. And once you're ready, you just go in and start editing your config files and you can kind of 
check and see how things go as you're making changes. Just save and it'll pop up. And actually, if you have two monitors, you could set your browser on one side and your configuration file on the other. Make a change and watch it change over here when you save. And that way you can kind of see what you're building out as you go and make sure everything looks the way that you want. So that's homepage. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the open source journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time. It's your open source advocate and I'm back and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your open source advocate, but I want you guys to be the open source advocates with me. So if you want to get out there and get some of this stuff. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. Thank you for subscribing.